Routing is probably the most challenging thing to grasp on this mixer. It can feel really complicated, but the good news is it's not as complicated as it seems. You see, block routing is better explained as batch routing because you're confined to routing batches of eight channels at a time. And then patch routing takes off that limitation and enables you to get more detailed with your routing configuration. So let's talk about block routing. And this is gonna be a lot of technical talk. So I put together a cheat sheet to make things easier. Download it using the link below this video. Now on the routing screen, you'll see several different tabs for block routing. Input, AES 50 A and B, card, and XLR out. There's one thing I can tell you about these tabs that is gonna make it all a lot easier to understand, and here it is. The input tab is the only one that has to do with inputs. Everything else has to do with outputs. Did you catch that? If you're wanting to program what's coming into the mixer, it's done on the inputs tab. Every other tab has to do with what's going out of the mixer. So let me walk you through everything on the inputs tab and then I'll show you the others. Local refers to what's plugged into the XLR inputs on the back of the mixer. AES50A refers to the inputs on a digital snake that's plugged into the AES50A port on the back of the mixer. And likewise, AES50B refers to the digital snake or additional mixer that's plugged into the AES50B port on the back of the mixer. Card refers to what's coming through the USB audio interface. For example, you might want to record all 32 tracks of audio on your computer's DAW software and then play it all back through the mixer. And this is a good time to mention the record and play option on this screen. This allows you to program two input configurations, one for recording and one for playing it back. The record configuration is the default configuration. It's the same configuration that you're going to use for the live show. The play configuration allows you to set your inputs to come from the card input so that you can play back your recorded tracks and practice mixing without the band even being there. And this is what we call a virtual sound check. And there is a video in this course that'll walk you through it. Now, the last routing option you have is user in, and this refers to whatever you have programmed in the user section of patch routing, which we'll get into in the next video. Now, I want to make sure that you remember this is the only tab that has to do with inputs. Everything else has to do with outputs. So let's head to the next tab, AES50A. This is where you program everything going to the XLR outputs on a digital snake that you have plugged into the AES50A port. Now, once again, local is going to refer to those things that are plugged into the XLR inputs on the back of your mixer. In other words, you can take whatever is coming in and send it right back out. It's the same story with AES 50 A and B and card as well. These all refer to the inputs that we just talked about. You can simply take these inputs and send them right back to the outputs on a digital snake that's plugged into AES 50 A. And then we have a new option P 16. And this refers to whatever you have programmed in the P 16 section of patch routing, which we're going to get into that in the next video. Next is aux one through six slash monitor which refers to whatever you have programmed in the aux section of patch routing. And then is aux in one through six slash TB for talkback. And this refers to whatever you have plugged into the aux in ports on the back of your mixer. And since block routing is in batches of eight, number seven and eight in this configuration refer to the built-in talkback mic and the external talkback mic. Finally, both user out and user in refer to what you have programmed in the user section of patch routing, which we'll get into that in the next video. Now, the next three tabs all have the same options that we just talked about. AES 50 B is where you program the outputs for whatever equipment that you have plugged into the AES 50 B port on the back of your mixer. And then card is where you program all 32 outputs that are available through the USB audio interface. In other words, these are the 32 things that you want to record on your computer's DAW software. And lastly, XLR is where you program the XLR outputs on the back of your mixer. We just went through a lot of options and it'd be tough to remember it all. So I created a printable cheat sheet to help you out. Download it using the link below this video. And don't forget, the input tab is the only place you configure inputs. Everything else has to do with configuring outputs. So let that soak in because it's more than half the battle and then head to the next video where I will explain patch routing.
This video is from our X32 Mastery course where we walk you through everything about the X32. If you want to become a competent sound tech and get your whole team trained without the headache, we've got you covered. Our courses take all of the guesswork out of mixing and training. Just check out the link in the description to learn more. So let's talk about patch routing and this is going to be a lot of technical talk. So I put together a cheat sheet to make things easier. Download it using the link below this video. On the routing screen, page over to the patch points section and you'll see four different tabs for patch routing. Out, aux, p16, and user. Really, all four of these have the same function. They enable you to set up routing channel by channel and then you can use these customized configurations for block routing like we talked about in the previous video. Now the main difference between the four tabs is their default state. So by default, out is where you program what is sent to the XLR outputs on the back of your mixer, and also the XLR outputs on your digital snake, if you're using one. And aux is where you program the aux outputs on the back of your mixer. P16 is where you program the 16 channels on the P16 personal mixers, if you're using them. And user is kind of like a bonus section of routing that you can use if you need more flexibility with your routing configuration. For example, let's say you want one set of outputs for the XLR outputs on the back of the mixer and a different set of outputs on your digital snake. You could use the out section for the XLR outputs on the back of the mixer and then the user out section for the outputs on the digital snake. You can also mix and match your inputs using the user in patch routing. You can program some inputs to come from the back of your mixer, others to come from the digital snake and others to come from the USB audio interface. And then once you have all this programmed as user in patch routing, then you just head back to the inputs block routing and set them to user in. All of the patch routing tabs have the same set of output signal options. And instead of explaining each of them on video, I put together a cheat sheet you can download below this video that's gonna explain each of them. You'll also notice there is an option for each output signal called tap. And this is the point in the signal chain that you wanna grab that signal and then send it to the output. For example, you can send it with EQ, without EQ, with compression, without compression. And to understand all the available options, just download the tap point cheat sheet below. And lastly, on the out tab, you can program delay for each output. For example, uh, when you send your audio to the lobby, you might need to delay the audio signal so that it matches with the sound bleed that's coming from the auditorium. Now keep in mind the out tab is the only one that allows you to delay the output signal. So if you need to add that delay, this is where you're gonna have to do it. All right, let's recap. Patch routing enables you to set up routing channel by channel, and then you use these customized configurations for block routing. And each section of patch routing can be used in multiple places. You can use your out configuration for your XLR outputs and your digital snake all at the same time. You can use your P16 configuration for your P16s and the XLR outputs at the same time. Really, when it comes down to it, you can pretty much do whatever you need to do to get input and output signals where they need to go. And I know this can be a lot to take in, so be sure to download those cheat sheets and enjoy the ride. And remember, if you mess something up, you can easily fix it by simply recalling an old scene or just change your settings until you get them right. So really, don't stress it. Take some time to think through your routing configuration and don't be afraid to try new things. Once you get it all squared away, just save a scene on a flash drive and store it in a safe place so you always have a backup of your routing configuration.